depression is a major, major problem these days with um, modern life, and it's linked to numerous different diseases, and including osteoporosis as well, and um, and asthma, and they're all linked. So because inflammation is like a tiered system, and ironically, when your body produces inflammation, it also the same molecules also turn on repair pathways. So they're able to shut themselves off. A lot of times when we take steroids or pain meds that are not, you know, that are often like more than we need, we're kind of messing with the system and we're uh, preventing our bodies from turning on the repair pathways. And the same thing when we have chronic inflammation, our repair pathways get out of whack. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It's a little red button, you punch that, and it's gonna notify you every time we put out a new episode that can help you improve your bone health. And then also, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for the free seven-day osteoporosis kickstart. That's gonna walk you through everything you need to be doing right now to get on the path to improvement and stronger bones. After you do those two things, go ahead and press play on this episode, and I'll see you inside. Welcome, welcome to this episode of the Bone Coach Show. Joining us today to explore respiratory health and chronic inflammation's connection to a host of different health conditions, including osteoporosis, is Dr. Nosley Latefi. Dr. Nosley Latefi, co-founder and chief scientific officer at Applied Biological Laboratories, has been on the forefront of cold and flu research. He collaborates with major academic institutions and leads a team of world-renowned researchers in investigating the cause of cold and flu symptoms. She and her team have isolated molecules found in nature that effectively modulate and balance upper respiratory and systemic inflammation, while also maintaining optimal homeostasis in the body. Their product, Biovanta, has been proven in published peer-reviewed scientific studies and shown in randomized double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trials to dramatically alleviate symptoms in a few hours and shorten the duration of cold and flu by many days. Dr. Latefi is a life sciences expert holding a PhD in molecular biology and neuroscience and has written numerous peer-reviewed articles for scientific, business, and law journals. As an industry thought leader, she is also well-informed on the regulatory aspects of over-the-counter drug and supplement products. Dr. Nosley, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Kevin. I'm so uh, happy to be here. It sounds like you've, you've done some pretty impressive work in this field of upper respiratory health and systemic inflammation. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about how you got into that field and maybe how your interests kind of evolved and, and how you developed this amazing product that's helped so many people? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm a scientist by background, a biologist, and more specifically, I was studying um, adhesion molecules or signaling molecules in cells. And um, those are also used as receptors for viruses. Uh, so when I was doing my thesis work, I've been studying them in the nervous system, but they're also used as receptors in the respiratory system. Um, so I got into this field when I read uh, some papers um, and I learned that these were in fact used as receptors for viruses. And I got intrigued um, because there were a bunch of different pandemics, pandemics going around at the time, um, like swine flu and bird flu. And um, it just piqued my interest and um, the rest is history. <laughs> Yeah. And you've, you mentioned that you've isolated molecules found in nature that effectively modulate and balance upper respiratory and systemic inflammation. You, uh, what are these molecules that you isolated uh, and, and how are they balancing this upper respiratory and systemic inflammation? Yeah. So um, once I learned that, you know, these viruses use these adhesion molecules as receptors and gain entry that way, um, I also learned that, you know, the way that we get sick is usually the viruses first bind in our nose and throat. And I just wondered why isn't anyone, um, you know, taking advantage of that to prevent sickness or to cure it? Because, um, you know, in initially, at least in the first few days, respiratory viruses are really in the upper respiratory tract, meaning the nose and throat. And as I really, um, you know, delved deeper into it, I started researching, okay, so what's our natural defense? 
And uh, it turned out that, you know, we have these really important um, and powerful immune molecules in um, our respiratory tract, lactoferrin and lysozyme are the two most abundant ones. And they really do a good job of protecting us. But a lot of times, different lifestyle factors and environmental conditions can deplete those molecules. And that makes us more susceptible to getting sick. Interesting. Um, how, how effective are masks at helping prevent viruses getting into the upper respiratory tract? That masks work. Um, you know, I, I definitely do think that they work. Uh, I'm not up on the latest, latest research, but as of about six months or so ago, um, I researched it and it, it seemed like they're more effective at preventing someone else from getting sick if you're sick. But it's something that's really hard to study on a mass scale because there's so many differences in how people wear masks and everything. So they work, I think, most effectively if you know, you're wearing them the right way and you're in an environment where there's a lot of viruses going around. But I think, with that said, even if you do wear masks, you still will get sick because you know it's not 100%. So even though it'll probably cut down on your frequency of getting sick and the number of viruses that enter, your system, you are still, I mean, there's really no way to prevent getting sick. Almost everyone will at some point. So can we talk about the respiratory barrier? Uh, what is that? Uh, what is that composed of? And how does that affect the rest of our health? Yeah. So the respiratory barrier is actually very familiar. I mean, the respiratory ba barrier is actually very similar to the gut barrier, which um, you are very familiar with on your show and your experience. And they're actually, they have very similar cells. If you look at the gut barrier or the respiratory barrier in the microscope, they look very, very similar. And they're, you know, they're actually respiratory epithelia. So their epithelial cells are also very similar to your skin cells, which, which is another, your skin is another type of barrier. And um, essentially they are responsible for keeping your body protected from anything that would, could be harmful in the outside world. And that's a challenge for your respiratory system and your um, gut because they need to absorb things from the environment that are good. So it's, it's a very thin barrier um, in your respiratory system in your gut because of the fact that they do need to absorb things. Um, your skin is a little different. It's much thicker and it's, it's much stronger because it doesn't need to be as permeable. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the similarity and, and, and the challenge and, and, you know, it's a delicate balance and, um, oftentimes it does get out of whack and that's why we get allergies or respiratory infections or colitis, leaky gut, et cetera. So what compromises this respiratory barrier? Usually, um, it's environmental factors like, you know, exposure to pollution, um, a lot of allergens, and ironically, not having enough exposure to germs, because, you know, if you learned of the, um, we know about the allergy uh, paradox, uh, you know, I mean, the hygiene paradox that so people that live in overly hygienic environments tend to get more allergies. <laughs> it's because of the, you know, there's a balance in the immune system and your immune system needs to, you know, for lack of a better word, get, you know, practice. <laughs> um, it needs to be tested but, and challenged, right? Yeah, yeah, it needs to be challenged. Otherwise, you know, it, it's just gonna get overactive and, and you'll get allergies. But yeah, so, those are some of the things um, that can throw it out of whack. And also like your gut barrier, you know, gets thrown out of whack when you have a lot of processed foods, you know, that, you know, not enough fiber because the gut lining also needs to get, you know, practice in, you know, doing what it does. So, um, you know, just like our bodies, we need to exercise. Things need to keep moving.
Yeah. And then how does the health of these mucosal barriers impact our immune system as well? Yeah. So um, the mucosal system, it's actually, there is an immune system in your nose and throat. They have their own resident immune cells, which are uh, mainly macrophages and dendritic cells. These cells don't produce antibodies like your blood cells do but they're the first line of defense. And actually I think a macrophage and dendritic cells also align your gut as well. And they're your first line of defense. And so initially when, you know, a, a virus attacks or you have, you know, something that's bad in your food, like a parasite or something, these cells take over and stop that from infiltrating into the rest of your body. And if they don't work well, so inflammation is like a tiered system and that's the first level of inflammation. It's like, you know, the, the, when you have a fire in your house, you know, it's, you, you want the, um, you want to get the, 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 what's it called? The, um, fire extinguisher instead of having your sprinklers go off. Right. So that initial phase is like, you know, a towel or a fire extinguisher that you put on the fire before your sprinklers go off. So if you don't have the macrophages and dendritic cells working optimally, then the fire is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. The infection is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then your blood cells need to come in. Uh, you need the adaptive immune system, which has your antibodies. And in order for that to happen, you need to, they need to infiltrate the tissue. So then their damage needs to be done um, so that the blood cells can actually get into your tissues. And then that accelerates the inflammation. So to answer your question, um, you know, ideally you want your barrier cells to be functioning properly, to be strong so that they can minimize inflammation. And the best real world example I can think of is, you know, with COVID-19, a lot of people are ex were exposed or are exposed to the virus, but never show symptoms. Um, meanwhile, the virus can still be found in their nasal swabs, but they had no idea that they have it. Well, that, in that case, their respiratory lining is doing a good job of keeping it at bay. And, you know, they're not having inflammation, so they're not having respiratory symptoms. Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I want to take one more minute to talk about if you are somebody who was newly diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis, and you're at a point where you're stressed, you're worried, you're overwhelmed, you have no idea where to start or how to get started getting confident in your plan. I want to tell you about the Stronger Bone Solution Program. Over 5,000 people have come through the Stronger Bone Solution Program, and it walks you through the exact process you need to fill in the missing pieces, uncover critical things in your plan that you may not be aware of, and help you make modifications, adjustments, and tweaks to get you to the place where you're building stronger bones. I want you to get confident in your plan so that you can focus on living life and enjoying the life that you deserve with the people you love most. So if that's where you wanna be, head over to bonecoach.com forward slash apply and apply for our Stronger Bone Solution program right now. I'm Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I want to see you inside this program. I want to help you get on the path to improvement and stronger bones. Hope to see you inside very soon. Let's get back to the episode. Interesting. And, and uh, in terms of inflammation, let's talk about that and its connection to maybe other health issues and even including osteoporosis as well. Yeah. So um, inflammation is a major, major problem these days with um modern life and it's linked to numerous different diseases, you know, you name it, uh, what we're dealing with, um, you know, cardiac diseases, uh, diabetes, obesity, um, all of these have underlying inflammation and chronic inflammation as a component and, and including osteoporosis as well. And, um, and asthma and, and they're all linked. So, you know, because, Inflammation is like a tiered system. And um, ironically, it, it produces, when, when, you, when your body produces inflammation, it also, the same molecules also turn on repair pathways. So they're able to shut themselves off. And, you know, um, a lot of times when we take steroids or, you know, pain meds um, that are not, you know, that are often like more than we need, 
we're kind of messing with the system and we're uh, preventing our bodies from turning on the repair pathways. And the same thing when we have chronic inflammation, you know, with uh, those diseases that I mentioned, uh, our repair pathways get out of whack. And so, um, you know, another real world example I can tell you is that um, people who have severe asthma have almost seven times higher risk of developing osteoporosis. And um, they think that the reason is, is because they're often taking steroids to manage their asthma. And, you know, that throws the whole balance of the repair and the inflammation out of whack. Um, and then unfortunately, you know, they, they um, have a chance of ending up with osteoporosis. So yeah, it's really, um, really a big topic and it's interlinked to a lot of different diseases. Yeah. Steroid use for sure. Glucocorticoids, um, have, uh, have a negative impact on bone, you know, people that are taking prednisone, you just have to be aware of that, uh, glucocorticoids kill osteocytes. These osteocytes are the cells that orchestrate the bone remodeling process. So bone being broken down, bone being formed, uh, and you're killing the orchestrators of that process, uh, when you use these and, Anybody that takes glucocorticoids is going to have really precipitous bone loss, you know, in the first couple of weeks or to months following that use. But if you continue to use them, especially over multiple years, that bone loss will continue on. Uh, and then for anybody who who has had who has osteoporosis, who maybe you had steroid use in the past, just be aware that that was that's probably a contributor to that. There may still be things taking place now that need to be addressed, but that was likely a contributing factor. Um, Let's talk about uh, anything else relating to bone health, osteoporosis, the immune system that you think is important to to touch on. Yeah, I'd like to touch on vitamin D, um, maybe a little bit, and vitamin K. I'm sure uh, because you're focused on bone, your listeners are aware that um, you know when you take vitamin D, you should also make sure that you have an adequate amount of vitamin K so that you're able to, you know, your body's able to incorporate the vitamin D into your bones um, instead of just into your soft tissues. But I like to talk about that because a lot of people, um, you know, especially cold and flu season, uh, talk about vitamin D as being important for your immune system, which it is, but, you know, also to not forget to take the vitamin K as well. And, um, you know, not only that, also maybe as a reminder that vitamin D is important. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, vitamin D is a critical nutrient that we need. It acts as a hormone in our bodies. Uh, we, especially as we enter into colder weather months too, I know this is more cold and flu season, right? Is, is the colder weather months because people are maybe in closer proximity. Um, and, and uh, that can be an issue for people then, but you're exactly right. As we take in uh, more vitamin D, and if we're taking calcium, magnesium, we also want to increase that uh, vitamin K2 consumption because it activates matrix GLA protein. It activates osteocalcin and helps you form stronger, healthier bone, but also prevents the calcium from going to the soft tissues like the kidneys and the arteries. So very, very important to incorporate those. Um, and then let's talk about just for a minute. So you've got this, this product that you created too, that was focused on helping people with their uh, the respiratory health. Can we talk about what, what is this product? Uh, what does it do? And what are the, the ingredients within it? And why are those helpful? Yeah, of course. So our product uh, was developed because as I was researching, you know, um, how we actually get sick and how viruses bind and how our body defends itself, I realized um, that uh, nothing really on the market Dealt, dealt with it effectively enough. Um, a lot of the products on the market were developed in the 1950s and don't address the underlying inflammation that's happening when you have respiratory symptoms. So uh, I looked into, you know, the natural molecules, lactoferrin, lysozyme, um, and also other natural molecules that could effectively you know, treat the inflammation. So the specific inflammatory pathways and um, those happen to be uh, from plants. And um, there is acetylsalicylic acid or methylsalicylate, which is 
a natural uh, antiviral found in many different plants. We get it from many different foods, broccoli, raspberries. It's very highly concentrated in mint leaves. And, um, you know, aloe has a specific, the aloe leaf juice has a specific component um, that modulates bradykinin, which one is one of the main um, inflammatory signals in respiratory disease. So um, that, you know, those along with lactoferrin and lysozyme, we formulated over um, almost 10 years in our laboratories and we use respiratory tissue to test them to, um, you know, come with the optimal formulation that effectively targets the inflammation that's happening in respiratory disease and also helps the respiratory lining to repair itself. So uh, yeah, so to answer your question, um, you know, that's the genesis of our product and our formulation. And, um, you know, it's going back to what we talked about earlier about inflammation and repair. Inflammation is a very nuanced process. Uh, a lot of the molecules and, you know, that's why steroids, you have to be so careful with steroids because steroids basically just shut down all the inflammation. But now we're learning that, um, there, there are in, in, in the whole cascade of inflammation, which involves many, many different molecules at the same time, some of those molecules are actually turning on the repair process. So you don't want to completely blunt everything. And um, that's why we chose to look at natural molecules, because natural molecules often work in a very nuanced way as well. Um, they don't really you know, just target one specific aspect of the pathway. Um, and they're, they're also able to modulate their signaling as well. So it, it just so happened that, um, you know, we, well, not just so happened, it was a lot of hard work, but, um, you know, we, we developed a formula that really is able to stop the inflammation, but also to not uh, deactivate the repair process. So, and how does this, how does the product work? So do you, is it like a, you know, for some reason I want to say, may I think nasal spray when I think of like cold and flu season or something, but how, how is this product administered or taken or how do you actually get it? Yeah. So, uh, we didn't, um, develop a nasal spray, uh, because it's a different regulatory, uh, you know, pathway. So the FDA is very, very, um, critical of nasal sprays, even though there are some on the market. Um, but uh, the, the respiratory system is linked. So when, uh, you know, you have symptoms in one aspect of your, your respiratory system and like, so we have a throat spray basically. And the throat spray has components that you can inhale in your nose, but um, which will also help with nasal symptoms. But the respiratory system is linked. So if you have inflammation because you're having respiratory symptoms, no matter what you're having, if you're having, uh, you know, sneezing or stuffy nose, and you deal with the inflammation, you know, by taking something in your throat, like we have a throat spray or a lozenge, it will modulate the inflammation in your nose as well, because the pathways are linked, and it will stop the inflammation, inflammatory pathways, and you'll feel relief. Uh, we actually are publishing a clinical trial, a randomized um, controlled placebo controlled trial that we just finished. Um, and our uh, throat spray was able to um, decrease nasal symptoms as well as, uh, you know, the, the throat symptoms as well. Um, so sneezing, stuffy nose, sore throat, uh, cough, and headache as well. So yeah, so our products work effectively on all those aspects of inflammation. And what are the, so if somebody goes in the past, if somebody were going to get, use an over-the-counter medication and they're taking that, what are the side effects? What are those over-the-counter medications? What are the side effects of using those medications? And then why would BioVanta be a better alternative to that? Are there side effects that show up with, uh, you know, you've got the gold standards of studies done. Are there side effects to show up with BioVanta to... Um, can you walk through, start with the over-the-counter and we'll go to BioVanta? Yeah, sure. So uh, most of the over-the-counter products are a combination of four ingredients. Um, so it's guaifenesin, 
dextromethorphan, phenylephrine, and, and um, pseudoephedrine. Phenylephrine was just recently deemed ineffective by the FDA, and it was taken off uh, shelves in November, I think. And, uh, you know, uh, all of these ingredients were developed in the 1950s. Um, they're all neural modulators. So basically, you know, they were given to people and then people were asked how they felt. And because they completely numb the pain, you know, they felt better. But it was just numbing the pain. And but in the meantime, was, you know, killing nerve endings and stuff. And uh, we, we studied a bunch of, you know, to see up close um, what they actually do to the respiratory lining. And we did see that they decimated the respiratory lining, killed the cells. So an analogy would be like, if you did this to your gut, you would be getting colitis. <laughs> oh, wow. um, yeah. So, yeah. So it's, what does it do? I mean, we didn't actually do a clinical trial to see, you know, what it actually does in people, but it, it can't be good because it really is killing the cells. And furthermore, all of these ingredients have been tested individually and in combination in randomized clinical trials by others, uh, including by the companies themselves. And none of them have been found to be effective for either the symptoms that they claim to be effective for or for shortening the duration of cold, which is what they're supposed to do. Um, and then side effects that we do know about are um, pseudoephedrine or um, is, you know, it is a stimulant, so it will keep you awake. And especially if they're nasal sprays, uh, you become habituated to them. So, um, you know, you'll have like a rebound effect of congestion, nasal congestion. And um, yeah, so, and dextromethorphan was, is a, was developed uh, from an opioid or, a, you know, a cousin of an opioid. Um, they're all basically neuromodulators. Guaifenesin is used off-label as a muscle relaxant. Um, and then, you know, as I mentioned, phenylephrine was just taken off the market. So they're, so suited, yeah. so they're, in, they're ineffective, they're killing cells, they're, they're, uh, um, they they may have a stimulant effect and they may be somewhat addictive potentially, you know, that's yeah. really interesting. And these have been sold for how long, which products are we talking about? Um, like th if somebody's walking into the store and they're like, Oh, I have a cold and flu. I'm going to go get these products that have the ingredients we just talked about that have been shown to not be effective. Yeah. I mean, it's basically your Amusinex, uh, your Sudafed, your Robitussin, um, Oh, and then I um, I didn't even mention acetaminophen, which is Tylenol. Um, that's a real kicker there. So acetaminophen is mainly taken for fever and pain. Um, but the interesting thing about acetaminophen is that it will do nothing for inflammation. So you're much better off to take aspirin, which as I said, is natural um, or ibuprofen which uh, both aspirin and ibuprofen will actually address inflammation. But aspirin is better because it's, it irreversibly inhibits um, the inflammatory uh, enzymes. But uh, ibuprofen does work in inflammation as well. Acetaminophen does nothing for inflammation. Not only that, acetaminophen depletes your liver of a very important antioxidant called glutathione, which you need very much if you're sick. <laughs> and interestingly, chicken soup will help your body make glutathione because it has the amino acid cysteine from the um, bones, you know, as they, you know, form the soup and the collagen. And let me, let cyst me clarify yeah. that. Let me clarify that. Yeah. For people. It's not your canned Campbell's chicken soup. Exactly. <laughs> it is the you made some bone, you get good quality chicken bone broth, and that's how you make your soup. So keep going, please. With I just wanted to clarify that for people. Yes, yes. Ideally, your pastured chicken, you know, keep one in the freezer when you get sick, thaw it and make a good, yeah, soup with the bone. Exactly. Yeah, so, so that's rich in cysteine, um, which then your body uses to make glutathione and um you know as we discussed in the beginning um 
Your respiratory symptoms are basically inflammation. And so if you have glutathione, your body is able to, you know, uh, control the inflammation and repair itself. Fantastic. But, but yeah, but acetaminophen just basically uh, completely depletes your liver of glutathione. Yeah. And so I, I don't think anyone should ever take it. And ironically, it's in a lot of cold medicines. So, I mean... Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of The Bone Coach Show. If you're finding it helpful, please leave a positive rating and review. Hit that like button, subscribe to the podcast or the channel. That lets us help more people and reach and serve more people. And it also lets us know that this is helpful to you on your journey to better health and stronger bones. And then also, right down in the show notes, you can actually find a link to my free bone healthy recipes guide that's going to give you access to some amazing and delicious recipes to support your journey to stronger bones and then also we have a link to my free stronger bones masterclass in the show notes too and that is the three-step process that has helped people in over 1500 cities around the world get confident in their plan for stronger bones over 110,000 people have have taken part in this and it's been really really helpful for them and i want you to have free access to it too so add your name and email right down there in the show notes get access to that free stronger bones masterclass and let's get you confident in your stronger bones plan today interesting so now let's shift to um biovanta which is your product. And let's talk about, because it's got the double blind randomized placebo controlled studies uh, showing that it's effective. Um, but are there downsides to BioVanta? Is there like an upper limit or a certain amount you shouldn't exceed or uh, of throat sprays that you're doing? Well, I mean, like anything else, like even with, with any food, you know, the, there's, there's a limit. You don't want to take too much. I would say if you're allergic to milk uh, or eggs uh you know you shouldn't try it or you should maybe try it in a controlled way with supervision from a medical provider but uh yeah so uh, we also use aspirin in one of our products um it is not extra strength aspirin it's a it's a regular dose but we also use uh winter green oil in our supplement product uh and that should not be taken excessively i mean i think you would have to you would have to take like multiple multiple bottles of it in in a day which no no one in their right mind is going to do um you know to to get to get you know to get sick but other than that uh no we didn't yeah in, in our in our uh, clinical trial we didn't have any adverse events uh we had one person who had to stop, but then she, it, it's because she was deemed too sick for some other reason, but it had nothing to do with the, with the, um, the treatment. So, okay. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, just, you know, common sense, or if you're, you know, sensitive to aspirin, although we, we do, we use enteric coated aspirin, so it should be okay. Even if you have a sensitive, sensitive, sensitive stomach, but, um, if somebody's super sensitive to aspirin, that's the only thing. So how is somebody getting this? How is somebody finding BioVanta for one? And, you know, once they get it, are they getting it after they're already sick? So they've already got the symptoms or should they just have it in the house? And at the first inclination that they might be coming on with it, they start to take it. Yeah. So uh, you can find BioVanta at, at uh, pharmacies nationwide. It's carried at CVS. Uh, Walgreens, Walmart. Um, we're also on Amazon and also on our website, biovanta.com. Um, it can be used. Uh, we have a, a product, a supplement that can be used daily. And, you know, it's just lysozyme, lactoferrin, uh, aloe, and wintergreen oil. And, um, you know, you can take that uh, throughout the day, every day, as your, uh, you know, in crowded areas or on mass transit. And, um, you know, it, it, it will prevent you from getting sick because it uh, strengthens your respiratory lining. It's been proven to do that. And um, then we have another product um, that is classified as an over-the-counter drug and it, can take, it contains aspirin. So it's a dual product, the spray, uh, which you also uh, take the aspirin as well. And we chose aspirin because it it, it targets uh, more specifically the inflammatory pathway, 
that is associated with respiratory symptoms. Understood. Thanks so much for sharing uh, your knowledge and expertise, Dr. Nosley. Uh, any, anything else you want to share with our audience before we close this out? This is really, really interesting. No, I, well, I guess the last thing is, you know, don't forget uh, to feel good because that's the best thing, you know, to have joy, feel good, uh, do whatever makes you happy. Cause that's ultimately the best thing for your immune system and your health. And um, yeah, I think, I don't think we get enough reminders of that. So I totally agree. Totally agree with you. Well, uh, let's tell people, is there a website or anything like that we want to send people to, or where you, you, I don't know if you have a personal Instagram page, a website that you want, want people to go to just to say hello or check things out. We can link that in the show notes below. Yeah, sure. Um, we're at, uh, well, we have an Instagram, uh, it's biovantaotc, and then um, biovanta.com for our website, um, which has a lot of good info that I spoke about and uh, links to medical and scientific websites. Um, so you can learn more. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share your knowledge and expertise with our audience. For everybody listening, you can find all the resources, show notes, everything mentioned today over at bonecoach.com. And for everybody listening, we'll see you in the next episode. Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Hope you found that episode helpful and that you enjoyed it. Just one last reminder, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for your free seven-day osteoporosis kickstart. It's going to tell you everything you need to do to start getting on the path to improvement. Hope you found this helpful. I'm your Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I'll see you soon.